come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening. This is the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast coming at you every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest to take over the world. One listener at a time, and hopefully this week that's you. Take over your soul or the oh, world? Oh, yeah. oh, 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 souls of the world. <laughs> And who are these people, voices that are talking to you? These are the internet radio superstars. I can't speak for the voices talking to you. But <laughs> I'm Holly. <laughs> Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Colin! What did we watch tonight? Tonight we watched a movie called The Devil Rides Out. We've heard about this yeah. movie. We have discussed this before. Yeah, we keep on bringing it, it up. It keeps coming up. Yeah. When we talk about like satanic 60s movies. Mm-hmm. Or satanic Which movies is, from the... Yeah. Yeah. They're no, the Satanic best. 60s movies. We love. <laughs> yeah. We love. They're the best. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, do we know the director of this film? Um, yeah, this is Terrence Fisher, and um, he has done a number of... Uh, this is a Hammer film. Nice. Hammer. Okay. What year was this? We said 1968. the 60s. 1968. So this okay. was the same year as Rosemary's Baby. Ooh. Then. A lovely Satanic year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And... We, I brought this because we had done a satanic 60s movie, which, uh, which predated this one, yes. right? That yeah. was like 1960, yes. The City of the Dead, which also had Christopher Lee in mm-hmm. it. Correct. Who's in this one. And yeah. you so. were just like, I'm in the mood for more. Well, and remember that key aspect that Christopher Lee was in our previous satanic movie. And mm-hmm. it's also in this one, because I, I have a conspiracy theory here. <laughs> going like, here. Do, yeah. is, I mean, is Chris, has Christopher Lee taken over the wall? It, he, it might be the Christopher Lee is it wall. The Christopher of fame Lee wall now? Now? Yeah. I feel like it it's might be close. Oh, man, right? Yeah, because it was yeah. the Sylvester Stallone and yeah. then it was uh, somebody else. Oh, who was it? it? Someone like crept up real close. Like, we were like, oh no, so and so. Now it's, uh, it might be Christopher Lee. We've yeah. done a lot we've of Christopher Lee. We've done a lot Lee of Christopher Lee, yeah. But we've also done three, and that means <gasps> inductee into the, the, the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame Terrence Fisher movies. Nice. Oh. Oh, Welcome lovely. We watched The Curse of Frankenstein. Okay. And The Curse of the Werewolf. Okay. <laughs> yes. yes. And, and The Devil, the Devil Rides nice. Out. Nice. Lovely. And uh, this movie was also known as The Devil's Bride here in America because the, the distributors Devil's thought Bride. that maybe The Devil Rides Out sounds like a Western. It does. It does. But that would have been cool, too. <laughs> that would have been fucking badass. Yeah, give me a satanic Western movie Dude. to go with The Devil's Reign. Yeah. give you a vampire Western. All right. From the the Curse of the Undead okay. from I'll 1967 or something A vampire like that. Western. It's yeah. a black and white vampire Western. No, that sounds dope. It sounds great. It, or would would we be Is alone this in like that a situation? Billy the Kid versus yeah. Dr- Dracula, Dracula versus Billy the Kid? Get, oh, yeah. God, it that movie. It feels like... Are we it, getting Maloned? Yeah. Um, uh, there's a guy who's kind of like, you know, <laughs> Cowboy Dracula, you know, that they're, they're trying cowboy to, he rides Dracula. into town and okay. the girls start having bites on there. It's Dracula, but with Western so stuff. So boring you're, is what you're like, your lack yeah. of enthusiasm yeah. tells me we can skip it. Yep. It has a good, the vampire is like, oh, okay, I can see why they cast him because he's like, <laughs> okay. you know, vampire Dracula. He's Chris, but it's Ross here. Got yep. it. <laughs> but it, it feels like a TV Western. Like okay. a t- It feels like a TV series. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Yep. Maybe it, like was a, a, maybe it was a test pilot for one maybe, that just never yeah. got and picked up. Like a, got, yeah. But like a corny one? Like no. A, no, it's no, not it's corny. serious, but it's, it's cheap. Like, it it's feels not cheap. Like, yeah. It's not like gun smoke. <laughs> it, it's like the high yeah, chaperone. Yeah, 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 yeah. It feels okay. stage bound. And all that. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So we're all talking right. about vampire westerns. Yes. This is not a no, satanic not, western, but it has a satanic western. It's like an English countryside satanic it movie is, yeah and i yeah. am here for yeah. it you what know year I love did this movie English take place that's what that's i was gonna a, ask that you. is a question <laughs> that's a question because these cars yeah uh, wh- wh- where are these cars from like the 20s i think it's the 20s right. yeah i yeah. think it takes place in the 20s okay yeah. that would make well, sense i mean the pearls and mm-hmm. the hairstyles would suggest that that's correct yeah, yeah. the cars the pearls the hairstyles mm-hmm. So the movie is based on a novel, and mm-hmm. the novel was r- written by a guy named Dennis Wheatley, mm-hmm. and he apparently was a prolific author in that period of time in the 20s and 30s, and um, some of the books that he wrote, like, you know, he'd do, he had different characters mm-hmm. would have like a series of, but he had a series of the Duke do uh, 
pronounce his name. Uh, Christopher Lee's character. Oh, um, Derishlu. Yeah, something. Duke like Derishlu. Nicholas Derishlu. Was that it? Mm-hmm. I think so. Re- right. And uh, so, anyway, those are all the, like the satanic thrillers, right? Where he would so. Um, I guess Wheatley had, you know, studied the occult, um, believed that the occult was a very real thing. So, okay. So people going into this movie, are they supposed to have knowledge already about this character? Is it like a James no. Bond that like they just know? I think, uh, actually, did I read because that the somewhere mo- that because one the of movie his characters is... inspired Ian Fleming is a kind of a, but. It, um, because the movie is written in a way that there is a lot of information it seems like the audience is supposed to know really is is, that's my take from it i feel like there's information that we're that we're supposed to know already about the occult or about these characters both well no the characters the characters Okay, because i thought like the whole thing was basically and this is kind of my own personal fascination with this movie is Mm -hmm. that it's like and like it maybe the guy was making it up Mm mm-hmm but it feels like he's he's going like I found out all this shit about like occult and the occult rituals and how occult circles work and all that, and I'm giving it to you in the plot of this movie, and it feels like researched. Correct, yeah. correct. But the way Christopher Lee's character is written, like we are, like the audience is very much, de- it's very much dependent on us just accepting that this dude is an expert on the occult. Mm, mm-hmm. okay. Like there's yeah. no backstory. There's no reason why this guy should know all this shit. Yeah. He just does. And as an audience, we're just supposed to accept that. Unless so I'm like, you bind to my conspiracy theory. Which that is? please. My conspiracy theory <laughs> is that Christopher Lee in this movie is the same character as Christopher Lee in the City of the Dead. Because in the City of the Dead, he was an occult professor. He was. Why is he <laughs> good in this movie and bad in that movie? Uh, this... That's his village villain origin story. This is the okay. prequel movie. This, this is, is the prequel, prequel movie. <laughs> Perfect. And then he turns heel in the city of the this. dead. Yeah. I am on yeah. board with this theory yep. now because it didn't make sense before. Yeah. I'm just like, why am I supposed to just accept that Christopher Lee just knows all this shit about the occult and he's just an expert for it, no reason well, was, at all? Yeah. Cause at, there were, you know, I guess as the movie goes on, he knows so much about so occult rituals much. that he comes off as kind of like a 1920s Doctor Strange. He, like yes. he is able to do the rituals yes. to combat the evil rituals. And, Although I yeah. guess they do explain that in the movie because he spends a lot of time off screen at the British uh, okay. that's, library. That's the other thing is he goes to the British library, but then there's other times that he's just like, I have things to do and mm. just goes off and they never say where he goes what he's doing yeah. just that like he's, he's research working that's mm-hmm. what he's but that's what he's doing that's why he never sleeps he naps once in this movie and they have to wait he him does up. nap once yeah because he's too busy researching there's how just do you a lot the of ominous presumptions about this guy yeah it's almost like he's a satanic exorcist yeah, he's, it's almost like he's the fixer, like right? He's, he's the guy that you call in. That's you what, need like, to close he's like the Van loops. Helsing. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. Van Helsing. Yeah, which is ironic. But we, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> but he's a good guy for once. Yeah, I mean, it's weird. Yeah, Christopher Lee as the hero. He, he looks said, like a villain though in this he movie. Looks like a villain. Yeah, well, because he's got the like the he's the, the goatee and the very the very badly glued on facial hair. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The hair slicked back. He's looking extra tan. <laughs> like we have seen him in heroic stuff before. It's I mean, he was, he was uh, um, Sherlock Holmes, right? Mm-hmm. When, he was. And Peter Cushing was Watson. Have I got that backwards? I think he was Sherlock Holmes in The Hound of the Baskervilles yeah, for Hammer. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, so he has done heroic things. But we always think of Christopher Lee as like one of the, you know, he's always the bad guy, he's the monster. Bad guy. He's Dracula. Um, so... The 1960s, right? We were talking about like on the City of the Dead. I, I think, like, as we're kind of looking at at 60s satanic movies, mm-hmm. it's like I just keep sitting there going, like, what was in the water? What was going right. on? I mean, obviously, you had political assassinations, and the whole world felt like it was going to shit. Mm-hmm. But before that, right in the 20s, you had Aleister Crowley, mm-hmm. and this movie. Seems like okay, this guy, this Makata, the bad guy, is Alistair Crowley, right? right? Seemingly, yeah, yeah. And he was a, uh, I mean, does everybody know who Alistair yeah, Crowley is? I think so, like a famous mysticist, yeah, type 
figurehead, cult leader, religion creator. It, it, they all apply. What's the uh, name of his, like, author, the book of the law. The book of the law. Yeah. Do as thou wilt. Yep. Who added the, uh, as long as it hurts no one, do as thou wilt. Is I that think the that Satanists? came later. Yeah, the Satanists, yes. <laughs> well, the satanic yeah. verses yeah. Is that yeah. the Anton LaVey. So yeah. Anton LaVey and the Sa- mm-hmm. Church of Satan was kind of, mm-hmm. took inspiration from Aleister Crowley. Correct. Who and was then, a, he was a magician, at least that's what he said. He yep, did a lot of yeah. um, magic you know, fortune telling and yeah, yeah, yeah. Side magic with it with a K, yes. you know, because yeah. he didn't do, you know, carnival cheap <laughs> magic. He was working spells yes. or something. Yeah. But I think some of his philosophy comes mm-hmm. off through Makata in this movie, right? Yeah. It's the, mm-hmm. the uh, using your will mm-hmm. to affect change in the world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. OK, well, I guess I was going to ask a big question about mm-hmm. motivation, but I, I suppose we'll get there. Um, OK, so who? What? Why is it always like rich white people shit doing this satanic stuff? They got the time and the space. Although I, although I, I thought money. that when we were watching this, mm-hmm. and then I noticed that at the big orgy scene, there were people of color. There. Yeah, I noticed. I was, I was very, surprised and by at that the meeting too. I was, of the yeah, astrological yeah, I was, society. I was very excited. I was yeah. like, well, I like that they're inclusive. Yeah, but the that's irony great. <laughs> is Rosemary's Baby the same year. Mm-hmm. Also, kind of does, the idea being that like when when the Satanists get together, mm-hmm. there's representatives from like all over the globe. Like this yeah. is a yeah. global thing. Yeah. You know, that there's this cult yes. that still worships yeah. Satan in the modern day. And Movies. I think that's really what these are getting at. It's like sa- Satanism is no longer like a uh, superstition. Yeah. It's like, no, they're still here right yeah. now practicing and, among us. And this is like a thing throughout cinema, right? Like we see this every so often, just like the, the rich the elite, evil cabal. Yeah. The rich elite gathering yes. from all over the world. Like, yeah, but where did, where like do we fucking like the ninth gate? Yeah. It's very yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, th- this reminded me a lot of that real Bohemian Grove. Like, yes. are you guys familiar, familiar with that? Ooh. Like that's what this reminded me of. I'm like, yes. this movie is like basically inspired by that, you know? That's very so, true. The idea yeah. that, yeah, the elite all, uh, meet and, sacrifice uh mm-hmm. you know um the black cockerel and the white hen because yep. they have nothing else to do. <laughs> yeah I, well i like I, said, I feel like with rich people right if you the thing is if you eat steak every day it eventually tastes like a hot dog right yeah so you got to keep upping the steaks right and that's how you eventually get to satanism because right. nothing else gives you it's a like, dopamine rush yeah. anymore <laughs> It's like the fucking like African poachers. They move up yeah. to the greatest, the greatest game. You yeah, know, like, they, they eventually yeah. got to hunt people yeah. because yeah, you've you've killed everything else. Yeah. You know, you killed everything dangerous. Yeah. Now it's time for the yep. most dangerous game. Man. And it's like, how many parlor games can you play before you're doing seances? You know, <laughs> for the thrill. Oh, it's yeah. a it's a punk sensibility. To Colin, be how many times can you look through the telescope before you just think, you know, <laughs> See, I've had enough. Was I the only one like disappointed that we didn't actually dive into any of the telescopes i wanted to see i wanted to see like a satanic constellation or something i I was like show me that i want to remake potential right i think i want to see like the fucking like comet that's making them do this stuff. yeah because the astronomy tower plays a huge role in this movie it's like a character in this movie well maybe we should let's set it up for the the folks how do we get into this movie who well first of all so we've established uh christopher lee is duke de richelieu uh he is returning uh, somebody's returning He's picking home. up Rex. Right, his mm-hmm. friend Rex. Yeah, from the airport. Because he, Rex, and Simon mm-hmm. uh, always have a uh, reunion on yeah. a certain day, and Simon is mysteriously absent. So they're like, well, we'll go to his house. He's he's done something suspicious. He's bought a home, a big home, mm-hmm. in the English countryside. We should pay him a visit. But it turns out that Simon has guests. Yeah. Well, and they're instantly suspicious of this guy, right? Yeah. Like instantly. He's like, I haven't talked to him in three months. No, you haven't. He bought a house, a big one. What? <laughs> <laughs> like that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. You know, my first thought would be he won the lottery, right? Yeah. If I haven't heard from him in three months, and he bought a giant house. Well, he fell into some cash yeah. or something. Like, yeah. Sounds great. Let's Satanism is not my first It's not my go-to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's some go-to. kind of like, there's some backstory, I guess, between these three guys, like Darishley, it was like older and what was it it was like him and rex's father somehow saved simon's father or something or, or you know whatever so they've been yeah. in the war and this is the kid of one of their friends and they're like yeah. we're gonna forever protect him and we you know so we are close and it's, the fact that he's not talking yeah. to us means something else has happened it's because, like our adoptive little brother yeah kind of scenario yeah so they go to his house he's having a soiree 
in yes. his house that has a gigantic uh, did observation he, did he, tower. Is yeah. that why he bought the house? Yes. Yeah. Under the influence of the uh, quote unquote astronomical society. Correct. <gasps> What if he can't afford the house? <laughs> Is that what if he the, got hypnotized into buying yeah. a house he can't afford? That's why they're so appalled. Yeah. They're like, he is in so much debt right yeah, now. Yeah. They're like, this guy is going to be underwater on this mortgage for the rest of his yeah. life. Did he only, but it, is he going to unload it like the next day? Yeah. Right? Is this right. only like for one specific night of the year? Yeah. How, what is the time frame of this movie? How many days does this take place over? Uh, like three, right? Yeah, or something? yeah I think it's so. April. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's coming up on May Day. May mm-hmm. Day being yeah. a satanic, uh, significant Love it. holiday. <laughs> yes. Also in the Wicker Man. Mm-hmm. I mean, the May Day. I guess it's always a, been. It's a pagan holiday. A pagan yeah. holiday. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, um, what? What? So, I guess uh, Derishlo and Rex go into this party and. Mm-hmm pretty soon begin to suspect which i like that simon is just like playing it so chill he's mm-hmm. like no this isn't a party this is just a little club get together and i'm like did you see that spread yeah like this is a party they're wearing There's ball candles gowns are wearing ball gowns yeah. like this is a soiree yeah. this is yeah. glorious he's in a tux with he's tails t- like, yeah <laughs> like dude this is not just your casual lounging around the house outfit it's like i'm sorry mm-hmm. like this is more than just a charcuterie board like for a casual <laughs> <bitch>. <laughs> like this is and I'm, I'm, I'm spread at this point in the movie i'm thinking like okay christopher lee's definitely evil right so exactly. my thought is this is his inciting incident he didn't get invited to this soiree and yeah. this is what's going to kick off all the conflict it's, sleep, it's sleeping it's <laughs> no. sleeping beauty yeah this is yeah. what pisses off yeah. maleficent yeah, like exactly. this is it i didn't get invited yeah, yeah. and oh, i was like oh, and i was like yeah. you know what he'd be justified i i if, yeah. he, if that's the direction really took, pissed but, if yeah, i wasn't invited to a yeah. party it was somewhere around here i think holly that you were like wait is christopher is, Chris, is there gonna be a twist <laughs> yeah. is christopher lee is just the good I guy just, yeah. i was just like when does he switch teams <laughs> yeah. when does he yeah. turn bad and colin's like he doesn't I'm like <laughs> what he's the good guy this is insane. Yeah. With well, that mustache, he's the good guy. <laughs> yeah. But he's got, because of his, uh, so I guess, you know, whatever, he's a man mm-hmm. of the world. I don't know what he does for a living, he's but he's your debonair. excellency, mm-hmm. right? He's mm-hmm. referred to by his staff. Um, he's he's uh, or Simon or? Derishalu. He's, he's a duke. A, he's a duke, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's an aristocrat. I like when, uh, you know, I need to take one of the cars. Take one of them, any one of them. Take any one of them. Yeah. I want to be that rich someday. It's in the 20s hey, when on they're on like now. new yeah. automobile, you know. Yeah. New. Who well, knows I mean, how much then, they cost. Then when but... they go to his niece's house, they just like fucking steal the car. And yeah, they, don't yeah. bring it, they don't bring it back. It's like they're taking just, somebody's horse. They're just like, whatever, it's yeah. fine. Um, so anyway, he his antenna starts going off right away. He's like, what, there's, there's 13 people here? Mm-hmm. Um, you know. And, and they're like, and they're like, when did you join the club? And Rex is like, I'm not a part of this club. And he's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Shut well, up. <laughs> Play cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. Be cool, be cool. Yeah. So he gets wind. He's like, uh, what? I, I guess the the evidence is when he goes up to the um the the tower, the observation tower. He Which finds the. Is- so the great because mm-hmm. oh, they're yeah. like walking to the door he's like i'm sorry guys i gotta ask you to leave this is a private club mm-hmm. i wish i didn't have to do this but i gotta ask you to go let's hang out tomorrow we'll get lunch and christopher is like yeah sounds good but i'm just gonna go look at your telescope real quick and like i have some the stairs <laughs> it's so funny it's- <laughs> and he's got like uh satanic uh star charts or whatever yeah. the, it's a the big circles. marble floor with a big satan head on it yeah, yeah it's great it's huge you cannot miss it and this this like astronomy tower is huge it's fucking huge. huge. Yeah, usually they're like like the size of a spiral staircase and mm. enough room for like two people to stand at the no, top. No, this you know? is yeah. like a ballroom yeah. with, with an observation mm-hmm. dome. Yes. So I, I like the idea that like this house was owned by an occultist, but he died like long before there was a certain yeah. astronomical or astrological. Sorry, I'm saying mm-hmm. it wrong. It's it's okay, astrological yeah. society. Yeah. Um, you know, before the event happened. Yeah. And so the uh, cult, right? Maybe that's why they need Simon because he's got the money. Right. No, well, they're all rich. There's like a countess among them they're and all, all this rich. other stuff. Yeah. They're, they're all but like, so they, yeah. and they buy this house they're because they nobles. need it yeah. for this particular event. What is the, this, I guess, is maybe the thing that I don't quite understand about this movie. What is the cult after? That's a no great idea. question. Yeah. <laughs> there's no overall plan, it seems like. It just seems like this is what we our tradition. Well, yeah, I, I there's there's a there's a short term goal, yeah. which I get. And that becomes like the fuel for what the plot mm-hmm. of the movie is, is that um Simon 
is going to be baptized into the satanic mm-hmm. cult. And so we have to save Simon from his soul. Mm-hmm. And that's the movie, right? Yeah. Once you save him, it's the movie's over. But what is the long term? Right. You know no. what I mean? It's yeah. like, no, I know. I was wondering that this movie too, because other movies, like we'd already mentioned the ninth gate. We know that the goal of that movie is to eventually summon get, the summon devil. The devil. Or, yeah. They want to yeah. see the devil, right? They want to yeah. open the ninth gate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we see the devil like halfway through this movie. Yeah. <laughs> and it seems like he gets vanquished pretty easily. Pretty easily. I didn't mean it was awesome, but it was like, oh, this feels like the end right? of the movie in the I middle know. of the movie. Yeah. yeah they like, happened the twice. Fuck? Yeah, it did. Right. <laughs> there were antagonists who should be, you know, like the devil. You know, I was yeah. like, well, that should be all end all bad guy. And it's like they're just a, a boss to be defeated on the right. way to the you know. Right. Um Okay, so uh, Simon has fallen. In the, it is run by uh, a guy named Makata. Mm-hmm. Um, and Who has the greatest voice. I mm-hmm. love the way this guy talks. Well, it's Charles Gray. I know. From uh, the Rocky Horror Picture Rocky Show. Rocky Horror Picture nice. Show. He was also a Bond guy, wasn't he? He was, he was Blofeld. He was Blofeld, yeah. In Diamonds Are Forever. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, those are like the two yeah. things I think probably you yeah. know Charles Gray from. But he's mm-hmm. been in a ton of British shit. Like a yeah. ton. Yeah. But that dude's voice, I mm-hmm. love it so But he's much. a good Satanist. You know, yeah. like, I don't he's know what they... Yeah, like, yes. <laughs> it's like... Uh, and again, this movie, I'm going to summon another movie that we talk about, but uh, The Curse of the Demon or Night of the Demon also has this type of guy mm-hmm. in it. You know, mm-hmm. the, the you know, he comes off as debonair, high society, but he actually believes in the occult and he's a very dangerous individual, right? Um, so Makata wants to bring uh, Simon... And this, there's a woman, and her name is Tanith. Yeah. Um, and he's going to try and baptize them both into the the cult, right? Mm-hmm. And later on in the movie, another plot thing, and I know I'm, I'm maybe poking holes in this, but he needs Tanith for a ritual. Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. Specifically, don't know. Yeah, her. it's a good. This is also a plot hole. I mean, we get that she's important somehow. She's more important than Simon, mm-hmm. but I neglected to pick up because I think the movie didn't give it to us. Right. Why she was important. Which is why I'm like, is there stuff that is like known from the books that the audience is supposed to already know? I don't know if they know it. Okay. I know they left stuff out. I did some okay. Googling and I guess Wheatley's book had there. What they did have like a, uh, a plot to influence somehow World War Two. I don't know if oh, they were cool. trying to start it, you know, because this is the twenty nine or something that like movie. that, you know. But that's all that's all been deleted from, yeah. gotcha. you know. And they were after some relic, mm-hmm. and you know, okay. so there was there was more to it that all got left out. Yeah. Um, Wheatley also, little side note, um, he wrote a book called "To the Devil a Daughter." And that was Hammer's last movie with Christopher Lee and Natasha Kinski. To the Devil that was in Daughter. That sounds like a good cool movie. That I like really it. To the yeah. Devil a Daughter. That was their, you know, their exorcist. Oh, movie. damn it. Oh. I was really hoping for like a, the devil literally has a daughter and yeah, she's uh, going to be Lilith, the new Satan. Like Lilith. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was hoping for. Is it Lilith? For. I think it was like on a certain night of a certain day, if you sacrifice her or do something, you know, she yeah. becomes possessed by the... Yeah, she's like the okay. Antichrist or All something. Right. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's not. I remember watching it. It wasn't very good, but yeah, it, it felt like a modern for nineteen seventies Hammer movie. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like yeah. they put their money into it, and then uh, that was that was it. That was the, the last gasp. Yeah, the, the one that killed him. But yeah, it was based on a Dennis Wheatley book, okay. also. So, um, Derishlu and Rex get Rex out of here by cold cocking him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The first of what <laughs> two, maybe three times this guy gets oh, knocked right. out cold. Okay, yeah, yeah because the a spirit appears. Oh mm. yeah, yeah. That, so is is that the devil in a form, or is that just a like a like a guard? Well, we're like a, w- the only way we know what anything is is because Derishlu is telling us this, right, and so right, we go right. like, okay, we accept that you've researched this stuff, right. and you know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. So okay. This guy shows up yeah. with big glowing, you know, eyes. He's Don't a, look at his he's eyes. He's almost like a genie. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Floating he's, like a genie. Yeah. Too. He's floating. He's yeah. got like that diaper thing. Like yeah. he's almost like a genie. Yeah. yeah. Appears he, out of the satanic 
floor symbol and the mm-hmm. yeah. And he was like, "Don't look at his eyes." <laughs> and his Don't eyes are like eyes. rolling around opposite directions, it's so it's really weird. hard to not yeah. look at them because it's distracting. It's very yeah. distracting. Yeah. How do you how do you defeat these uh, these spirits? Well, it turns out you just throw jewelry at them. Yeah, I just throw a crucifix. <laughs> Not even crucifix, it's just a cross at them. And it's, it's, yeah, just yeah. A, yeah. Poof. Poof. The guy explodes, uh, yes. he's gone, and reality returns. Um, so they whisk Simon away, and then we get the explanation of what's actually going on. Uh, Darish Luz figured it out. It's like, you're a fool. Mm-hmm. You're, you're going to try and give yourself over to the worst, uh, dang, most dangerous uh, game mankind has ever played or mm-hmm. whatever. And so they have to save his soul. And so then there's all sorts of like, you have to keep him asleep. We got to hypnotize him. He's also a hypnotist, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Darish Lewis. Um, Again, just no questions. Yep. Yeah. No questions asked. Just, yeah, okay. He's good at that. Mm-hmm. He takes cool. him to his cousin's house. His niece. In, his niece's house in the country. And then he has to go and, you know. Go back and do some research, mm-hmm. which is a bad thing because that means, of course, that, uh, you know, um, Simon's going to wake up. I think actually this is where we get the car chase, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. They didn't go to his niece's house You're yet. You're correct. Yeah. I'm wrong. Um, they regroup at Christopher Lee's house. Yep. And then he's like, I'm going to go to the British Museum. You need to go get that dame. And apparently they know where to find her. He calls. Every hotel. Oh, he calls London. every hotel. Yes. He, the twenty eighth hotel. He yep. finds her. Good God! Yeah, <laughs> and so, he's up all night doing yeah. it. And so Rex is supposed to go find this broad who he met for like thirty seconds. <laughs> yep, at the party. And there's no like scene of them meeting and him convincing her. Just cut to them, them in the in car, the car. driving. Yeah, and she tries to jump out of this moving car when it is going really so fast. So many it's questions. Like, yeah. I didn't expect car chases and car stunts in this movie. Like, I'm pleasantly know. surprised, but yeah. I don't know how it was in the 20s, but I don't generally just hop in a car with a dude that I met for 30 seconds. Yeah. And he's like, hey, I'm going to oh, yeah. take it was you for like, a drive. Uh, we're going for it. Well, because everything's polite society. You mm-hmm. know, you're out in the daytime. And, you know, this is uh, what yeah. a time. <laughs> uh, that's I why still, I think. I still call bullshit. I, I, <laughs> I was wondering about that, too. I think maybe you were saying, commenting during the movie that, like, these people have known each other for like 30 seconds, yeah. but they're like madly in love. Yeah. And I always assume, and granted, you know, this is through movies and stuff, mm-hmm. but because of the rigid moral structure that society had. Where you couldn't be like alone in a room, man, man and woman, right? They had to have the family around and all this mm-hmm. other stuff. Uh, people got married like a week after they they met because yeah. they just like you know had to get get to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. So romances were like mm-hmm. accelerated. I don't, I don't know though because they also had very long engagements back the then. Courtships. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they had yeah. courtships. Yeah. They would have like chaperoned visits and stuff. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so, then straight to me. Neither one sounds ideal, to be honest. No, the, everything yeah. is all bullshit. Yeah. yeah. So these two but are. But still, they've known each other for not even a day. Because they love. had like a third. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. It's like a 30 second conversation. And yeah. he's he doesn't even tell you where they're going. Because while they're in the car, he's like, oh, I'm taking you to lunch. And she's like, what? Yeah. Like he didn't even. He literally was just like get in the car, and she did. Yeah, like exactly. we don't see that, but that's literally what he just goes happened. to pick her up from yeah. the hotel. That she's like, sure, here we go for a pleasant like, drive in the country. Mm-hmm. I'm okay. not taking you home though, because yes. it's for your own good. And <laughs> bullshit. And she ends up stealing the car. Right and then, there's the chase scene, but right. Makata is able to communicate with her telepathically, mm-hmm. psychically. Just- yeah. Through the mirror on the the car dash, you know the, the rear, rear mirror. mirror. Yeah. And um, I thought that was kind of cool. Then there's was like cool. a, a car crash, I think, at some point, and then yeah. the duder crashed, and somehow we get back to the house. Everybody's under lock and key. The next big sequence, I guess, that the movie builds to is um, there's a big satanic orgy in the woods, right? Mm-hmm. It's pretty, uh, pretty big satanic well, orgy. Yeah, this I'm, is a healthy cult here. Yeah, I was like, how did they is, get there? Is she okay? There's the car chase. Yep. In which, what happens to his windshield again? Uh, right, it's fog. It's oh, fog. that was what? Because she went to the Makata gave her directions to get to the orgy location. <laughs> yes. And and use the <laughs> fog machine to yes. so Rex yeah I think right. he I think he had to push punch through the he glass, did but he we did. didn't he did. see that yeah no, we did 
Yeah, did we? you see him punch yeah. it. It okay. was awesome. But I was just like, what is on his windshield that he can't get off? Uh, with bug, like, just like, bug, like do they not have wipers bug. back in there? And they no, might not have probably. actually. I think yeah. the glass like turned to like like clouded. Glass. Yeah, it looked like, like it. it just, yeah, yeah, it looked like it changed glass consistency. Yeah, yeah. and he, but and he, he just punches just, out like, a hole, jabs, <laughs> and yeah. he does the thing. He does the thing that we do in the Midwest when you don't have time to scrape your whole windshield, and you just scrape a hole big enough for you to see out of. <laughs> he, he did that with his fist. He, he punched a hole just big enough to see out of. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so he's the one who tails her to the the location, the woodsy location for the big the big shindig, the big satanic shindig, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, because it was at that. Do they go? Yeah, they go to the mansion first with the snake. Uh, yeah, uh, they go to the mansion mm-hmm. first. Yeah, and the, yeah, yeah, because then he hides in the trunk of oh, someone right. who goes to the orgy. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So now it's an orgy by 1968 and standard. There. Yeah, yeah. So he stows away. So he's the only one. It looks like it looks like that scene in um, uh, the Ten Commandments at Gamora when yeah. they're all just like partying. It yeah. looks like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's where I think you know either the standards of the time because I always there like, was some making out amongst people. Yeah, and wild dancing. I yep. guess for 1968, but I sit there going like. You know, Makata just kind of stands there and like, mm-hmm, yeah. He, you know, he <laughs> presides over the the goings on, mm-hmm. which looks boring as hell. He just, you know, to him, for him, yeah. You know, I'm just gonna yeah. stand here and like, was, yes, everything is going well. I was thinking, that. Are, I was like, okay, yeah. is this like a rich person thing where it's like they're all just so bored with life mm-hmm. that they're just having this party, and he's just. Like he's getting so much pleasure from like acting like God, just overseeing his his minions. I think so. Like partying is that is that what he's is that the vibe he's giving off right mm-hmm. now? Yeah, because he's not like guarding, you know, yeah, and making right. sure that everything's going. Like he's not going over there and going, "Do you need another?" You no, know. he's just like, "Yes, my children sin in front of me." Yes. Like it's, <laughs> I yeah. love it. It's all coming together. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Rex at some point summons. He's able to get to a public payphone and call uh, Dereshlu. So mm-hmm. Dereshlu shows up and then the devil rides out no he doesn't ride out okay. he shows up on a boulder yeah <laughs> yeah it, which is okay like i like the visual language of this i like that he's just on a boulder overlooking it and he's like <laughs> he's like a very hairy goat man yeah but he's but, like sitting he's like sitting cross-legged up. with yes. his little goat he's, yeah. Yeah, he's goat sitting meat. like i was like is he meditating like, right he looks yeah. like right. he's doing yoga <laughs> right well he's in that symbol that you always see of Baphomet, Baphomet yeah. right? Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's yeah. true. Except without the, you know, as above, yeah. so below mm-hmm. hand gestures or yeah. whatever. But um, I was a little disappointed because at the beginning of this movie, we get some really great, like, satanic sketches. Oh, the title. Uh, woodcuts. Uh, like, yeah. Woodcuts, yes. Yeah. The title cards are and like, great. Yeah. I was really hoping that when we finally saw the devil, he'd have boobs because he does yeah, in the yeah. images. Yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, please let him have boobs. Right. But I mean, it is 68. So. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. How do they defeat the devil? Because oh they have to res- I mean, the whole idea is here. We have to rescue Rex and now yeah. Tanith. Yeah. And because, get them out of here. Because Rex is now in love. Yes. And it turns out that Tanith is not actually a full-fledged member of the no. cult yet. Because she hasn't been satanically baptized. Yeah, correct. But they ride in on this car. <laughs> yeah. They're like, we need light. It's hocus yeah. pocus. Uh, and they, but they are like yeah. driving through a crowd of people <laughs> to, get, to yeah. get up there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they're, right. These Satanists are dodging this this jalopy. And then they just huck the, the, the jewelry, as you said. Yeah. At Satan, it hits him, boom, he explodes into a puff of smoke and he's gone like a cartoon character. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I love just it. Ruined it. their party. Yeah. I cheered. I was like, yeah, this is like the climax of the movie. Fuck yeah. And then a lot more still happens after this. Yeah, yeah. It's only like halfway yeah. halfway through it. Mm-hmm. Because we're like, wait, we, we rescued Rex and uh, Tanith, and uh, we you know, we defeated the devil, and we got away from the cult. Mm-hmm. But no. Uh, it turns out, you, you know, yeah, psychically, they can, still, they can still get you. And they want you because of reasons, like as we said, <laughs> that are not enter- entirely determined. It's very... Dracula. Yeah. yeah. Calling so, his, his uh, person forth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, mm-hmm. there's a heavy, yeah, yeah, a heavy Dracula. I mean, that's what their bread and butter was in that yeah. period of time. So, yeah. 
and, uh, and Terrence Fisher had directed a lot of them, mm-hmm. so it's like, all right, this is. Do you what think we... Christopher Lee ever like got his role confused? <laughs> yeah, started yeah. to like summon. He's no, like, no, 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 that's, that's not you. Yep. That's not you. Yep. This is the movie yep. you're filming tomorrow in that's the lot you. next over. Yeah. <laughs> Although to be fair, like in his Dracula movies, he rarely speaks. Uh, mm-hmm. Only in like the first one, and maybe like the, the Scars of Dracula. All right. mm-hmm. Otherwise, he's just silent. I know he did say that this was his favorite Hammer film. Because he got to play a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, and you're the star. I mean, yeah. he's a star of others, but I mean, like the soul star. And He did go a little Dracula there for a second yep, when he, when he hypnotizes room. and he does like the hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he knows how to do it. I'm like, yeah. He's like, I got this. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Tanith and, uh, and, and uh, Simon are brought back to the residence, the, the niece's, the niece's residence. House, yeah. Mm-hmm. And again, Darish Lou, I have to go and do research. And so yeah. he ejects himself from the movie again. I just, just every time he does this, I feel like he's doing something that's going to like come back later on. That there's like some secret something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm just waiting for some. Like what? The twist that it's like, yes, oh my God, he was actually twist. in I'm on waiting it the whole for time. A twi- it doesn't even have to be that he's actually bad. Just like some sort of like he was actually a priest all along, like mm. something, because he keeps sneaking off and doing stuff, and they never say what. Right? No, they do. He has to. He's always excusing himself to go do research. <laughs> yeah, but it's but we never see him go there. We yeah. never see him do the research. He I just, mean, like, but really, watching a person turn pages in a book is not <laughs> like he just comes back with vials of like sulfur or salt or something, and he's just like, "Here, yeah, this will protect you." And we never hear about that. <laughs> again he is a font of knowledge <gasps> uh did you learn anything about the occult sciences uh as we're told that they are this evening that you didn't know i You're already like, know huh. everything about the occult sciences. oh okay all right well there you go that one thing he does where he takes salt hair and blood yeah and like boils it for the summoning yeah that had to have smelled terrible terrible yeah like, and you have to stand facing one way and summon mm-hmm. on my right hand. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, these mm-hmm. names the angels mm-hmm. and yeah. whatever. I'm Gabriel. making the sign of Osiris, uh, mm-hmm. slain Osiris risen. I'm like, oh, this is all kind of, mm-hmm. all goes back to Egypt. The Egyptians mm-hmm. really had their satanic uh, mm-hmm. rituals down. Yeah. yeah I, Apparently, Aleister Crowley did a lot of research in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Definitely. I think that's where his religion basically came. He yeah. went off to the you know the east mm-hmm. and came back with. The- I have a I have a little secret to tell you, Callan. That's how all religions are made. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. every single one there of them. Go. Yep. <laughs> so, um, Makata actually. Every time they say his name, I always thought they were saying Picata. Picata, <laughs> like, feel Picata. Yeah. Less menacing. <laughs> But he shows up at the house. And so what is the first meeting? Because I think this is where he really like has a scene, right? I mean, he's in the movie before this, mm-hmm. you know, at the um, the soiree, right. at the the orgy. Mm-hmm. Is it an orgy? Is it fair to call it an orgy? It's it's implied. It's implied. Yeah. yeah. A satanic party. Because the they're woods. like kissing and jumping on each other. Mm-hmm. And- yep. I like that Simon is kind of like you know the guy. Everybody else is in robes because mm-hmm. uh, they haven't been in, they haven't been baptized yet. Yeah, but do you get the impression? So this is the other question I have. Like, like why? Why is why? Simon wanting to join this group? That th- exactly. Yeah. Why are they wanting to join this group? Like I don't know. I don't understand. There no motivation is clear for anyone in this movie. The movie kind of treats it like. Um, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong here, but it's like, it's almost like, uh, like he has somehow in his, uh, social circles, he met this guy and now he is under the sway of this guy. And so it's almost like his will is not entirely his own. And so he's doing stuff without really, you know, I don't know, giving like a greater thought to it or something. I don't know if you know this, Callan, but. That's how cults are. <laughs> That's exactly how cults are. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't really seem to have, I know, but like, why do you want to join the cult in the first place? Something you know, enticed like, him. Something be... always entices. Because even Tanith, I mean, doesn't it seem like she's like, I have no will of my own. Do you, think, and... do you think that they really did have a genuine interest in astronomy? 
Oh, maybe. And that's how, and that's yeah. how they yeah. got it. And oh, like, probably. Oh, you're... They were like, I fucking love stars. Yeah. And they're like, well, guess what? There's this club we meet every week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's how they got them. It's like I how it Scientology is. has like those AA recovery centers. Yeah. Where they're like, oh, you want to get clean? Yeah. Well, you know who will help you get clean? Our alien space Zena board. Or yes. Whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> I like this though. This, no, this, this is, is where you go with the remake. You yeah. go a little bit more into that, like how yeah. it starts. Like, yeah, I was really interested in astronomy. Because yes, that's, because that's legit. That's how every they suck cra- you in. That's how every crazy cult starts. Yeah. No one joins a cult willingly. They join something that they think is going to benefit their life. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, There's exactly. always a nugget of truth that they follow that yeah. that's what pulls them in. They save the real crazy shit until you're in too deep. Yeah, they don't but, tell you that stuff up front. See, what, but what's missing yeah. here is the scene from Rosemary's Baby. Yes. Where she walks in and her husband and the cultists and it's like, you know, they they, they yeah. stop talking when she walks yes. in. Yes. Because he's been made an offer. Right. Yes. You know, and I guess that's what I don't get out of this movie. It doesn't feel like Simon is like, well, we're in it for the power, of course, you know, or something. It's mm-hmm. like, he's just kind of like, I really don't know what I'm doing and I can't get out. I can't, right, I can't, right. there's no way to, you know, that I can be free. He has, right. you know, he's got yeah, control the, of my mind. In the grand scheme of like how cults work, it makes sense, but we're giving that backstory to these characters. Right, the right, movie exactly. doesn't. Yeah, the movie doesn't the give that at all. Yeah. 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 No motivation for anybody. Yeah. Damn it. Well, except we got to save Simon. We know the hero's motivations, right? We got to defeat the evil Correct. and save, save Simon. Souls. Yeah. And the fucking girl that you fell in love with 30 seconds ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ugh. So Makata shows up and uh, has a, a, a confrontation with, I guess, the niece, right? Mm-hmm. Because uh, she's been left to defend the, the home. Everybody, yeah. you can't let, let them alone for a minute. Yeah, so. They can't. so, yeah, her husband is with Simon. Can't. Keep him, can't leave Just his watch side. him sleep. Mm-hmm. You yep. know, as easily. Rex is with uh, the love of his life. Watching her sleep. Mm-hmm. Make sure. Yep. He, but Christopher Lee did warn his niece before he left. Mm-hmm. So she knew that he could show up. She knew who would show up. Mm-hmm. So she was aware of that. But she's very polite. She's mm-hmm. very polite. They're English. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody, even he's polite. It's like, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. I think I don't want to disturb you. But uh, She's like, I've heard of you. He's like, oh, I was afraid of that. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's all so very let me civil. lay my cards on the table and he really did bring the car back yeah <laughs> yeah he's like i brought back her his car because when he storms off he walks yeah <laughs> he really mm-hmm. did bring the car yep. back um he is able though to i like that scene mm-hmm. he was scene. able to put her under you know like he explains like you know it's through the force of will and as i'm doing it to you right now as you look into my eyes you are falling deeper asleep they picked good people for eye shots mm-hmm. in this movie because it's uh um Mikado, the niece, and Simon all have mm-hmm. really gorgeous eyes. Mm-hmm. That works very well. I think Tanith at some point has she have contacts to give her like a extra ring of some kind of I, light, mm-hmm. you know, around I, her I irises. Think so yeah, it was hard to tell. I mean, she did have pretty eyes. They were like green with like bits of brown, so like it works. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, but, yeah. I thought maybe that was. Uh, to that, show she was under know. the sway. It wasn't mm-hmm. entirely her, you know, in mm-hmm. there. I don't know. Yeah. It's hard to tell. <clears throat> um, but uh, this leads to, he's rebuffed, I think, because, uh, you know, like he's he's got the whole thing wired, right? Mm-hmm. Like uh, Simon's trying to strangle the husband mm-hmm. in his sleep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tanith is going to stab uh, Rex. Mm-hmm. But thank God the... Peggy. Little yeah, Peggy, Peggy's the little daughter, wanders in, in yeah. <laughs> and distracts him and yeah. breaks his concentration, and it all goes Thank to hell. Thank goodness for Peggy. But he leaves with an ominous warning. I like that. It's a good warning. Yeah. Oh, am I supposed to? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, he says that something will be back later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something. I won't be back. But, but something, something will. will be back. It's pretty great. <laughs> so that means they're going to have to gird themselves against an attack by uh, all the, uh, <laughs> the 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 supernatural forces. Mm-hmm. And so Darishlu's solution to this is to um, paint a big giant circle on yeah. the floor. If you've, it's every episode of Supernatural. Mm-hmm. Yep, every single one. The, the circle of protection. Yep. yep. And they all have to stay in there. Don't break yeah. the circle. Yep. And the forces of darkness try to get them to step outside the circle. How do they do this? Um, with a uh, 
holographic tarantula. Yeah. <laughs> that is that is very large in some scenes and very small in others. Yes. Well, I like even when it was small, I'm sitting there going like that's a small tarantula. But yeah. I did notice I was like, Oh, they got little candlesticks by it. Yeah. So yeah, we're tiny supposed ones. to they do. Yeah. yeah. I don't think and it worked. Very, no, it did not. <laughs> and it's very clearly being like filmed through the glass. Yes. Terrarium. Yes. Yeah. Um, that being said, not sad when this thing got set on fire. Okay I was like, that. you know, I know I don't I don't advocate for animal abuse in these movies, but I was not sad about that. I'm okay one, with so. that. Yeah, they, they, they burn it. Yeah. Or uh, I guess yeah. it's like acid or something. Which, Smoke. okay, great way to get me to break that circle. If a tarantula is coming at me, you a regular sized one. Yep, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Sorry, guys. I, I can't do this. Well, yeah. the devil's the, even more insidious. Yeah, yeah but like the tarantula clearly wasn't enough. Yeah. So then it takes form of Peggy yes. coming in to the room and being attacked by the tarantula. Yes. Yep. And mm-hmm. are the parents going to just instinctively go? I right. like that another Christopher Lee punching the guy in the stomach yes. to keep him yeah. from going. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he clocks Simon at some oh, point. Oh, yeah. Simon gets too. punched multiple times yes. in this movie. Uh, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Knocks him out. Like, he can't be trusted. He's mm-hmm. going to break the circle. Oh, because he's under the influence of Makata, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. He's like, trying to walk out. Um, they hear a call, the ghostly voice of Rex, like, let me in, guys. Let me, let me in. in. And then finally, the oh, big, big daddy then shows we, up. Then we actually get it. The devil does, in fact, ride in. Yeah. The, ride out. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I wasn't so sure it was yeah. going to happen. We, heard, we hear the clip club. I was like, oh, my God, he's, he's on horseback. Happy. Yes. It's happening. Yeah. <laughs> it's great that you can they, hear him before yeah. he comes in. Love they it. They say that he's he sent the angel of death. Yeah. The devil himself. And yeah. the horse is all decked out in satanic yeah. gear. And it he's rearing and it had, it had wings. wings. Oh, so cool. And so at, cool. At first, it was, like a, it was like a hologram, but then it became like a real yeah. thing. It was it was rad. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty cool. And yeah. uh and the And it angel. like busts through the door. Yeah. 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 The angel right. of death eventually because he's like a knight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um and he takes the mask off and it's just a skull, skull. face in yes. there. Yes. It's rad. It reminded me a lot of uh Saint and all the cool horseback did, riding in that movie. I was like, Fuck I think yeah. we talked about that. Yeah. 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 When we watched Saint, because we were yeah. talking about how cool that imagery was, yeah. and Colin was like, You need to watch the devil rides out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It I I because like especially because we saw the devil get taken out earlier. I didn't know he was gonna make another appearance after that. Yeah. I was like, Oh shit. I was so, like, yeah. is he defeated? Yeah, or did he just like go home. Right. Like, what happened? Maybe the angel of death is a separate entity from the devil? Like the father and son, Holy Spirit kind of yeah. thing? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, in theory, like, yeah, yeah there's different, like, demonic yeah. figures. Yeah. yeah. At yeah. some point, they do bring up the uh, the key of Solomon. I think they call it the canticle of Solomon, but that is the one yeah. that names all the demons. Ooh. Uh, it's a real thing. The it ten, is a thing. The tenth key, the ten mm-hmm. keys of Solomon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Demonology is a real thing, Colin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Mm-hmm. We're going it's back. Well, that's why you had to have the Malleus Maleficarum to figure out how to beat him. Mm-hmm. Oh, was that Burning Witches or something? Mm-hmm. The Witch Hammer. The <laughs> I like Matthew Hopkins. There's Witch a lot Finder of great General. phrases in this movie. I liked the Bride of Chaos. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. That was a good one. I was like, I want to be the Bride of mm-hmm. Chaos. That's well, awesome. How, how do we defeat the uh, the the Angel of Death? Uh, they threw holy water at the the spider, right? Yeah. What I did we? So. Do? I don't remember what, what they did to the angel. Oh, they they uh he he um, is that when he does the the prayer or whatever? Yeah, it was some kind of was, was it? it Latin? I don't know. Oh, he, yeah. Okay. The way they build it up is great. It's mm-hmm. like there's only one defense against this, but and so but if I use it. It could kill us. It could kill, you know, uh, yeah. Simon. And, and time Tana. and space, as you know it, will cease to exist. That's heavy shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was like, shit. I can is... only use it when our mortal souls are in danger. That, there is a lot of weight to this prayer. Yeah. that. But that is kind of what the script is doing, like, all the time. And I think mm-hmm. that's why, like, it's always, like, these extremely peak, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's really just some guy yelling words, but right. the right. implication is that somehow he's shattering, you know, reality, mm-hmm. <laughs> reality yeah. um, by doing it like uh, Doctor Strange. And see, I keep coming back to that. Mm-hmm. Christopher Lee would have made a pretty good Doctor Strange. He would right? have. He'd be a great Doctor Strange. Yeah. Um, so, of course, you know, like he's flinging magic around mm-hmm. or, like he knows what he's doing. He does know what he's doing. But he just read this stuff in a book at the library, like moments before he showed up at Correct. the scene. Correct. We're, we're he's good. We are. <laughs> we are expected to have a lot of faith in this. He man. knows how to be three steps ahead of the movie, I guess. Yeah. Always. Yeah. So we got to read the rest of his adventures, mm-hmm. I guess. Mm-hmm. The Duke de Richelieu uh, mm-hmm. series. Um, I want to know this like 
mysterious librarian that he's friends with. Right. That like helped him with oh, all yeah. this stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know the curator there. Who yeah. Can get me into the. Is it like fucking Giles from <laughs> Buffy or whatever? Right. That's what I want. Right. See, this is yeah. like mm-hmm. the novels are yeah. probably pretty you know, <laughs> right. interesting. Um, so I'm sure there's one involving an adventure that they get on. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, why not? You know, so I want I want that story. Or he gets murdered. The curator gets murdered, and then yeah. the dude has to figure out like what they took and what they're planning to do with it. And, yeah. See, now yeah. you're talking. I know. Yeah. Um, Hammer would never. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy. Well, that's why I'm like, it must not have been a, a very successful movie. Otherwise, you figure they would have, you know, made right. sequels or something. But you know. Um, so anyway, we're like, the angel of death has been been defeated. And we're like, this is probably the end of the movie. <laughs> you would think, yeah. Right? Uh, because I think uh, uh, Tanith, who's going through like a detox in the barn, right? Because she's, they tie her up. and Yeah. Yeah. And, and Rex is watching her writhe around. Yeah. Until yeah. eventually she puts the zap on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he know. lets her go. Yeah. And then when the earth shattering spell is given... She dies. Correct. Because the angel of death shows up. He can't leave without a soul. Yep. And so this leads into the third act of the movie um, because the Satanists abduct Peggy. They think like, oh, it's over. But then Mm -hmm. they find out that Peggy's missing. Yep. And so off we go into the climax. And so they have to determine well where we've did they take we've now seen Peggy? the devil twice and right. it's not in the climax <laughs> right it's yeah that's just yeah i guess because your your there. your narrative bad guy is makata mm-hmm. sure but the ultimate bad guy is the yeah. devil right yeah. i don't really care about makata if the devil's popping up in my life this yeah. much right. you know cuz makata actually tells you know like simon at the 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 forest mm-hmm. uh shindig you know, turn and face your master. But he's not talking about himself. No, he's, he's like, talking about you know, the devil. The devil's right there. Um. So they have to summon Peggy's, or not Peggy's, Tanith's soul back into existence it's through a, a medium. Where they, where they took Peggy, which is just so stupid. I was like, you've already been to another Satan mansion. You don't think that's where mm-hmm. they went? Of right. course that's where they went. Right. You know how to get there. Yeah. Rex has been there. Mm-hmm. Simon's been there. Yep. You know how to get there. Why would they not just assume that's where she was? But whatever. I know. You would at least search it. Mm-hmm. It's like okay. maybe we'll search these places and if we don't have anything, yeah. then we'll try and like do this yeah. extremely like, complicated ritual. Well, we've been, we've been ritual. to two satanic mansions, Simon's house and this other dude's house. Maybe we should check there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just an idea. But it turns out that's where they are. Shocking. <laughs> um. Okay, so... Yeah, there's a lot of the ninth gate there, or like uh, eyes wide shut or something. It's, you know? Yeah, that was the other one I was thinking. It was eyes wide shut. Yeah, um, with yeah, all they, the cars they, parked outside. Yeah. It's like I was know. like, I've seen this is ninth gate. I've seen this scene mm-hmm. so many times. <laughs> yeah, um, but they 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 bring forth. Uh, is it Tana? Tanith. Tanith. They bring forth her spirit, but then it she's like jogged out because Rex interrupts the like possession or whatever. Yeah, because he loves her, and she loves him. I guess. But uh, she, and so they're like, she's guarded by snakes. What the hell does that mean? Yeah, winged, he's like, a winged snake. Yeah. He's yeah. like, oh yeah, I've been to that house. And so off they go to the country mansion um, where the Satanists hang out. I assume that's Makata's place. Yeah. Okay. But Simon has already gone ahead. Because as soon as he found out Peggy was gone, he like hauled ass and took off. Mm-hmm. But we can't go after him because, you know, Makata knows that he's coming. It would be suicide. Mm-hmm. So but then they go they after, go after him. him. Yeah. That's yeah. stupid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so what's going on in this house when they when they get there? I mean, does he clock a, a doorman? There's a lot of punching. There's, there's, a, lot, there's, there's a, lot lot a lot of fist fights in yeah. this movie. Yeah. Yeah, Rex, just, Rex just kind of runs in throwing fists. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All over. There is this there's this one woman that she's one of the 13 and she's Countess. like, mm-hmm. she's an older woman. She's like cross-eyed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wonder if she's been hit in the head multiple times. Too. Right. Is that like, was she cross-eyed before the cult? Ex- or yeah, is exactly. it just- well, there's a scene. If you recall this, where uh, Rex having crashed, to, I think it's Rex mm-hmm. having crashed his car yep. is running down the road and a car is coming and he's like, stop, stop. And, and it almost runs him over. It's the cross-eyed lady. And then we're yeah. like, did she mm-hmm. maybe just not see him? Right. Well, she's cross-eyed. Yeah. <laughs> I, 
I, I, I think that had nothing to do with the plan. I think she's just cross <laughs> She's driving a car. Yeah. I also like that he like chases the car, and it's yeah. not like he's that far behind when right. he's running after it. Yeah. It's like, what's top speed here? But she pulls into that into mm-hmm. the house. Mm-hmm. So everybody, all of our heroes eventually converge on this place mm-hmm. in the basement. All right. Was it the and basement? It's, I mean, it's a basement, but it's like a chapel like altar right type situation yeah. everything is like marble and pillars and- mm-hmm. right you got yeah. all your uh worshipers are in robes yeah uh makata's up there in his purple mm-hmm. and red mm-hmm. purple and red what do we think of purple and red for satanic uh oh, rituals? I, I mean it. red makes sense purple is the color of royalty yeah. so yeah. i guess it's in a con- little lutheran church for it's, me <laughs> yeah it's, it's like it's a little yeah. but i mean i guess it makes sense if they think like the prince of darkness he's royalty right oh, okay. i guess it makes sense yeah. yeah yeah um what are they going to do here at the uh the ritual it, well um since tanith has died Peggy is serving as the 13th. Mm-hmm. So um, she's going to be killed. Yeah. So yeah. she's a sacrifice. So that's yeah. okay. So was Tanith the sacrifice all along? I think maybe. Okay. Yes. I think she was chosen as a sacrifice. The importance of why she's the sacrifice and why Peggy can be swapped out in the, in a pinch. Mm-hmm. I don't understand. Nope. Virgins. I mean, I assumed, but they never say. No, but I wonder if that's it. Is it implied I, I, I she's assumed. a virgin and so she's been chosen as the... Again, you're expecting a lot from the audience. Yeah. You know? Maybe, but may, I wonder if like, you know, audience, I keep going, like, you know, when you when you think, you put yourself in the place of an audience of the 60s, do they just automatically read that and we're not? Was that just automatic shorthand? You know, it's like, well, yes. so she's a virgin. I mean, now we watch yeah. it and we're like, uh, maybe, I mean, the only reason I'm coming to that conclusion is because the girl could be, the little girl could be swapped out right? Yeah. as the, the sacrifice. Yeah. And, uh, Simon is also there. Um, Dereshlu and the two parents show up and mm-hmm. Dereshlu is like, take me instead. You know, yeah. it's like you can, or no, Simon is. No, one? Simon, Simon's already up there and he's like, I'm here. Let the girl go. And he's like, what do you mean? Let her go. She's the 13th. I need her. And then he's like, oh, God damn it. And then uh, Christopher Lee is like, take me instead. And he's like, I can't take you. You're sullied or something. I don't mm-hmm. know. They don't, He doesn't really say why. He just says, I can't take you. Mm. But yeah, then they, then Tana shows up again. Only as you know, she's dead. So you're saying right. she shows up, but like, because when she when they like summoned her before, she took over the niece's body yep. to like communicate. So she comes back and does that again, mm-hmm. or she was there the whole time. I don't. They don't really say. But Unclear. now she's acting yeah. as a force for good. Yeah, angelic she, almost. Yeah, yeah. She because they just like let her walk down there and I, I, I I'm it's very because they're like oh it's dead it's very unclear of why she all of a sudden has this power yeah right they don't specify like why this is like halting everything mm-hmm. I, I don't know but she st- puts a stop to everything and she goes up there and she like pulls Peggy off the altar and she's like face to face Peggy she's like repeat after me and they say some like Latin prayer mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden everything catches fire so she comes back from the netherworld mm-hmm. with the knowledge, the holy knowledge of how to actually defeat the uh, the satanic goings on. I guess. Yeah. But more than that happens. Not only does everything catch fire. Uh, what happens to um, Makata? Uh, he catches fire. Okay, yeah. he catches yeah. fire. They're everything fire. catches mm-hmm. fire. And then like the there's like, dr- like purple drapes everywhere yeah. and they catch fire and then they burn down to reveal a big cross behind them. Mm-hmm. So I guess this was like a holy chapel all along, I guess is the point there. Way to stick it to your... <laughs> like me, I guess. Like, I guess. I, I guess yeah. if you just put a, it's like a putting a like a sheet over a parrot and put it to sleep. Like if you just cover a cross, it's not there anymore. It doesn't affect them. But like, yeah, it's it's very unclear the rules. Is yeah. it a, like a, I mean, if it's a chapel, I assume it was like consecrated at some point. So somehow you have to undo the consecration. Right. 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 Yeah, I'm not sure how. I, I think you kill rules. a dog or something. Yeah. I'm not sure yeah. my satanic rituals. On that. It's been a while since. <laughs> you think they would at least turn the cross upside down or something? Yeah, right. yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or took yeah. it down. Yeah. 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 No, um, they just covered it. Like, yeah. No, no, it's it's not covered anymore. Yeah. Like it's 
It's always been there, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the, like, and when everything burns down and then just disappears. Yep. And then all of a sudden, shockingly, they wake up. They our wake heroes up. in in the, the the salt circle again. In the, mm-hmm. this is back in uh, Dereslu's house. The niece's the niece's house. Yeah, yeah. Niece in, yeah, and her yeah. husband's house. They're and they're back in the, the salt circle, and we're like, "Wait, what? Have and they been there the whole time?" Yeah, they they wake up, and it's it's this it's the same reaction that we have already seen when they when they come to the first time, and they think that everything's been done when the angel of death is defeated. Yeah, so they're coming to, but this time, um, her body's gone. Tanith. Uh, Tanith's body's mm-hmm. gone. Yeah. And then and they Christopher Lee goes to the door and there she is with with, Rex, with Rex. hand in hand. And we're like, oh, they're alive. Happy. Everything's like, happy. And, and so then he determines what's actually happened. He's like, like I said, when you say the prayer, time and space cease to exist the way you know it. Mm-hmm. We've gone back in time. He's like, yep. We remember what fine. happened, but it didn't happen. Yep. Like undo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, restart. Yeah. And this is kind of disappointing. They, we don't get to see what actually happens to the bad guy of the movie, Makata. Yeah. They're like, he's like, well, like I said, the angel of death can't leave without a soul. So he took the very soul that summoned him. Mm-hmm. Makata is dead. Yep. And it's like, okay, we don't see this, but he's dead. And that does like, wrap up the story. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but it, it seems like it's really easy to defeat the devil. Yeah. Like super easy. Mm-hmm. A little disappointing. Well, they've got this. They've got God on their side. I think at the, at the end of the movie, that's the tag, right? It's like we should thank Him for yeah. giving us the. So they got the ultimate. You know, if God created the devil, He can beat him. Okay, again, they make it sound very <laughs> simple. Just throw this jewelry, and I feel like the whole purpose, the whole like moral of the story of the Bible, is just kind of like watered down. If that's the case, mm. mm-hmm. throw a necklace. You're good. Yep. <laughs> I throw this symbol of holy uh, holiness or whatever. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. And then uh, you really it. dumbed it down. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, I guess the question that the good folks at home are wondering is whether or not they should watch this movie. That w- would we recommend it? I recommend the cover art. It's so good. It's the really poster cool. is so good for this movie. It's like that yellow kind of like grindhouse looking yeah. 70s poster. It's really good. I'm guessing this is the American because they said the beauty of woman, the demon of darkness, the unholy union of the devil's bride. <laughs> nice. The devil rides out. That's a great tagline. Yep. Yeah. It's a great imagery, though. Yeah, because it's, really it's cool. him. It's the goat headed, the goat of Mendes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, carrying, uh, is that Tana? Tana. Mm-hmm. But she's, yeah. she's wearing a nighty, mm-hmm. which she's not wearing in the movie. Right. I like it. And there's just like this weird eye and a mm-hmm. skull. Well, is Tanith on here twice? Yeah, Tanith's on here twice. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. <laughs> she is. She's oh at the top end. Oh, my God. Bottom. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. I love it. Yeah. Love it even more now. Pretty good. Um, okay. Well, we'll tell you whether or not you should watch this movie. But first, so stay tuned. But first, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I wonder if he has like a cool horse sidekick with matching outfits, you know, like the devil. He In might. this movie. I hope he does. I like the, yeah. yeah. The wings on the horse were kind of. Yeah, he's got nice like a touch. mini horse with that outfit. <gasps> but, yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right, it's buddy. like on the saddle. No. I want horse. him to have like a gerbil or <laughs> like a gerbil, like, like a, a capybara. <laughs> He's got a hamster. <laughs> he just With runs me. on the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we should let the good folks at home know how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. Or X. At Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Threads Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show about tonight's movie, The Devil Rides Out. 
Bill Hayner writes in and says, it's one of Hammer's absolute best movies. Terrence Fisher's masterful direction, Christopher Lee's mesmerizing performance as the Duke de Richelieu. Mm -hmm. and he spelled it out for us right there. Oh, there nice. I, I didn't even. And oh, Charles God. Gray embodies the sinister Mokata. Mm -hmm. Sadly, we never received another Dennis Wheatley production made to this quality again. Bummer. Yeah, that is a bummer. Uh, Nelson Nascimento says, I love it. The brief goat scene still creepy to this day. Mm -hmm. Some pretty amazing set pieces hampered by the capability of effects at the time. The story could benefit from today's technology, but they probably would screw up the atmosphere and enjoyment that Han Hammer captured. One of Hammer's best, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Whitaker says, I don't recall this version of Rocky Horror. <laughs> nice. yeah, yeah. Yeah. He says, I'm also not sure how I feel about Violet as an evil cult color. It's about as threatening <laughs> as pastel. Also, yeah. seeing this is written <laughs> by the one and only Richard Matheson, it must be good, but it begs the question why the movie, why this movie and not the superior Matheson movie that is The Night Stalker. Okay, Ooh. so again, we failed to mention oh. this. The screenplay was written by Richard Matheson, mm -hmm. okay, um, who's a novelist we talked about. He wrote The Haunting of Hell House. He wrote I Am Legend. He wrote Stir of Echoes. He wrote a oh, ton wow. of Twilight Zone yeah. episodes. Amazing. I mean, he's yeah. like a titan in the genre. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he wrote the screenplay based on Wheatley's novel. Nice. Uh, okay. Uh, the Night Stalker is um, the first. It's the, the movie. It's a TV movie that launched the Kolchak. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, I have heard of that. Yeah. yeah. Well, as amazing as he is, I will say that this is not his most comprehensive work. <laughs> yeah just saying mm -hmm. all right just last saying. week we watched a movie called splice and jimbo ice says as the resident advocate for the worst stuff the freak show has covered and often as his choice it's surprising that this was the deal breaker for sean i we suspect, agree with you <laughs> i suspect his status as a parent colored his issues with a movie featuring something that approached incest i mentioned this this morning i when wish I was, that was the case <laughs> well he says i mentioned this morning that i was listening to your podcast with my partner and i asked her if she ever saw splice and she said is that the movie where they fuck an alien <laughs> and how similar she felt it was to the shape of water and also she said she saw it at the theater and everyone was laughing and screaming no yes, yep, yeah. during the scene yeah 100 oh, percent. yep and and yes like that's it that's how this movie is going to be forever known is that's the movie where Adrian Brody fucks that creature. That's kind of his daughter. Yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, Steve Carney says, I saw this in the theater at our local mall with my dad when it came out. I remember it being disturbing and dumb. I think I enjoyed it's... every other movie I saw at the theater more, like The Wizard of Oz, Elf, and The Brothers Grimm. Sarah Polly <laughs> was in a much better film, The Dawn of the Dead remake. Yeah. yeah the, okay, one. but dumb and disturbing should be like a poll quote for the DVD cover of Splice. Dumb Absolutely. and disturbing is 100% that movie. That's my wrap up right there. Dumb yeah. and disturbing. And that's why we recommend it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Crypticus says I saw this in the theater and it was something else the entire theater was howling and clapping at the crazy finale I yeah. couldn't believe it wasn't a huge hit but then again it's too weird and too creepy to be one yeah that yeah. movie made like negative money it, they <laughs> lost money on that movie unfortunately. they had to refund <laughs> yeah, <people's money>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were saying that both Adrian Brody and Sarah Polly Oscar mm -hmm. winners Correct. Um, Kryptonian Orphan says actors need to eat and have additions added to their houses like the rest of us. Look <laughs> at the kind of stuff Hillary Swank has been putting out. Sometimes you got to take the money and plus you could really tell that they thought they were making something. I mean, yeah, they yeah, they tried. Yeah. yeah. Michael Caine talked about how Jaws bought him his house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Vacation house. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, Travis Legler says hearing Holly say that the phrase needs to be changed to mankind instead of humankind would that Correct, would try yeah. to fuck a new discovery made me think of Jay and Clerks too when he says you know sometimes I wish I did a little more with my life maybe be an astronaut like yeah I'd be the first motherfucker to see a new galaxy or find a new alien life for him and fuck it and people be like there he goes homeboy fuck the Martian one yep exactly and Kevin Smith wrote that in 2006 three years before this movie so I guess Holly has a valid point yeah yeah it is correct mm -hmm. I'm not gonna <laughs> find a woman saying that yep. mm -hmm. uh, not gonna well we want to thank each and every yes. one of you for yes. writing in yes. we really appreciate mm -hmm. it we do appreciate it very much so mm -hmm. and now we're gonna go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie the devil rides out starting Michaela, with Michaela. start us off i was wondering how that yes, was gonna go yeah. <laughs> start us off what did you think of the devil rides out 
Well, Colin has been recommending this movie to me ever since I watched City of the Dead and said I wanted more of that. Mm-hmm. And now I understand why, because it's the, it's the Christopher Lee Satanist Professor Extended Universe. So, Is um, there a trifecta? Yeah, I'm, I'm now I now I got to find yeah. out, right? Because Christopher Lee has made so many movies. There's got to be another There's gotta one, There's got to be right? a trifecta yeah. the Christopher Lee Satan yeah, movie. Yeah, so we can wrap Come up on. this trilogy. Yeah, um, I, I mean... The plot is Swiss cheese. There is holes all over the place, but it's so charming and it's so sincere and earnest in what it's trying to do and has so many cool set pieces. Like it feels pretty expensive for what this type of movie is, budget wise. I had a good time with it, even though there was points where I was like, oh, uh, what's happening? Uh, what? Uh, why are we here now? Why is this important? You kind of do have to like sift through to find the important stuff in this movie, which is a little annoying sometimes. But at the same time, you could also fold laundry and watch this and you're going to be able to keep up just as much as if you were intently watching it because there's just holes there. So you're not missing much because they don't give you much. But cool imagery delivered on the title. The devil did ride out and it was awesome. (laughs) And it built up to that scene in a way that was really cool. And the hearing him, especially on the surround sound speakers down here, hearing him get closer to the building before he busts in through the doors was fucking cool. Um, so yeah, I got to recommend it. I love 60s Satanist movies and I, I, I don't want to say like, I feel like this could be remade, but I feel like it might be a little too serious. Mm, yeah. Like mm. our Satanist movies are just so like prestige yeah. all the time. Yeah. And I kind of wish yeah. they would just be like, I mean, I don't want like a Rob Zombie Satanist movie. That's no, too far. No, no, that's no, too no. far the other way. But like, I don't know, maybe if like Ty West or somebody like that or, um, Hill House guy, Mike Flanagan, Mike Flanagan, if Mike Flanagan did like a legit Satanist movie. I mean, there'd be probably too much monologuing, but there's never for me. There's a yeah. lot of monologuing in this. Though. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Home, yeah, yeah. Um, I, <laughs> there's yeah. never too much monologuing yeah. for Mike Flanagan for me. I, I just it. I want I want the visual language of a Satanist movie to be really interesting yeah. too. You know, I mean, yeah, I guess Lords of Salem was a little bit of a Satanist movie. That yeah. you know, a little bit, but that's still not what I want. I want and all the cool visual. And it's imagery. my most palatable Rob Zombie movie. For yeah, sure. exactly. Yeah. Um, but I don't want like extreme like Satanist movies. Mm-hmm. I don't want that. I I want just give me cool outfits and cool rituals and cool magic. You know, yeah. like that's what I want. Um, but yeah, I recommend this. I had a good time with I it. I think give it Jordan Peele gave it a shot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what what needs to happen in society to like make us want to have a satanic panic movie phase again? What, yeah. what, how do we get that going? <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I recommend it. Holly, what do you think? Yeah, no, I I agree with you. I. I'm anxious to know if there is a if there is a third movie to complete the Christopher Lee satanic hat trick mm-hmm. because I I would watch the shit out of it. Um, I mean, he is into the Devil of Daughter, but that's late seventies. It feels very different. Yeah, no, that's that's not okay. the same flavor. Sixties, it's not the same 60s flavor. Era. Yeah, yeah. Um, because this definitely has has this has the same vibe of what we what we watched a few weeks back. Um. Yeah, I, I agree. I think this was this was it's a very charming movie. It's it's got that that sixties satanic vibe that we like so much. Like again, so many holes in this story, in this plot. We there's no motivation for these characters, like zero. Mm-hmm. We have the to bad guys, you're saying. Mm-hmm. All of them, really. I mean, other than like saving Simon, yeah. like there's no motivation. Mm-hmm. We don't know what anyone's mission is in this movie, um, or how they got there in the first place. Nothing. Um, so you've, as a viewer, you have to fill in a lot of backstory yourself, but it's enjoyable just because like a movie like this, there's just something nostalgic about it, you Mm -hmm. know, like in that English countryside setting. And it's, it's just, I don't know. I liked it. It is a little slow in some parts and it's a little misplaced of how, the devil shows up halfway through and then like three quarters of the way through, but then he's not in the ending. Right. Like I, I wish that Ooh. writing would have been a little altered to make more sense, to make it more of like the devil's movie. <laughs> like I, I wanted that, that climax to be a little more, um, Satan-y, <laughs> but yeah. So th- there's, a, there's a lot missing from this movie, a lot that I would have changed. And I think there's a lot here that really could make a cool remake, um, because people don't know this movie. I think it'd be a, a cool one to redo. Mm-hmm. Also, like just based on what Colin said about the the author and his the other books in his series in general, I think there's a lot of material there that could be dove into for some original right. content. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be really cool. It mm-hmm. seems like there's a lot there. He wrote a lot. I yeah. Mean, when you go back and look at his bibliography, there's a lot. Like you mentioned <laughs> Mike Flanagan. I feel yeah. like he could tear up that these books and really come up with something mm-hmm. amazing. 
So I think that's something that'd be awesome to look at. But yeah, anyway, I, I, I I'm still going to recommend it. It's, it's a, it's an, it's a, it's a good, it's a good movie that like for us, like it, yeah. it gives us those like happy feels, mm-hmm. you know, I agree. <laughs> gives us those happy feels. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm going to recommend it. It's a good time. I'm anxious if there's a trifecta here. Yeah. You gotta find it. Gotta find it. Mm-hmm. So that's our mission. Colin, All right. take us home. Um, <clears throat> I guess, you know, I'm sitting here. I was listening to, you know, as we're talking about like all the plot holes in the movie, um, I didn't actually notice them really. I didn't, I noticed them, but I didn't dwell on them while we were watching it. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. I think that's the nostalgia. Yeah. Movies like this, you, I mean, we pick it apart cause it's what we do, but, but generally you don't. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it has, and I know it had its moments where it was kind of slow and maybe that was because of the, pacing where you felt like you know you built to a climax then another climax Mm -hmm. and then another climax so maybe that kind of gives you like that feeling of you know you rev up and then you downshift rev up Mm -hmm. and downshift um their money shot was way too soon Mm -hmm. (laughs) but yeah well i mean they went with i mean i always love it when they burn a place down at the yeah at the end i mean that's Mm -hmm. the way you end a movie on fire but um I guess when I watched it, it didn't impress upon me that there were potholes in it. So I think like as you go through it, you're kind of driven along by the, you know, uh, will our heroes get to this? They explain what their next mission is. We have to, you know, prevent so-and-so from getting here mm-hmm. or whatever. And then we know that, you know, something's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess I, I, I would disagree, I guess, Holly, that like I didn't know like – the motivation i get the heroes and Mm -hmm. i i think that's what i'm saying that i was carried along on that being like okay i understand they gotta Mm -hmm. save this person now they've been captured now we gotta go get them yeah we gotta bring so like all that i got Mm -hmm. it's later when you're like but why are they why are the bad guys doing this yeah Mm -hmm. that i think is kind of nebulous you just see Mm -hmm. them doing it and you're like well because they're satanists you know, yeah. just, and so you just kind of go, or at least I did. I just kind of went along with it. Yeah. But I, and I think it's what we said earlier that like we don't know why Simon or the right. girl got involved in the first place. Yeah. And I, just, I, I guess, I guess there's sometimes we don't need to know that, but they got into know. something that they shouldn't have and now they, they're they yeah. addicted. They mm-hmm. can't get out or whatever. It has a hold on them or something. We got to have an intervention. It's a big I, intervention yeah. movie. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm hoping they're just were really into astronomy and got mixed up. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, but yeah, I like the, uh, I like, you know, I like Christopher Lee as an actor. I do think this is like one of his more interesting performances because, you know, you get to see him in that light as like, you know, mm-hmm. champion of uh, the forces of light, even though, you know, I mean, like if he just went a little the other way, he'd be uh, a, a force to be reckoned with on the dark side. You know, mm-hmm. um, I like Charles Gray as the uh, creepy Makata. Um, I liked uh, the set pieces. I think mm-hmm. I said that already. My, I'm spinning my wheels. I like this movie. <laughs> I would recommend that you watch it. I thought it was entertaining. You own this movie. I do, because that was the other thing, I guess, about it. Um that I had a sensation watching this that I had when I was watching, don't laugh, Warlock. Okay. Or the Julian Sands movie, where it seemed like the writer had gone off and done his research in the occult mm-hmm. and would bring up these rituals and stuff that felt like, well, who the fuck would make this up? This is, you found this in a book somewhere yeah. and you're relating it to us. And this whole, everything that comes out of Christopher Lee's mouth is like, this is Dennis Wheatley, went to the library, found all this stuff out and he's putting it in the voice of uh, of Christopher mm-hmm. Lee. So it's like that kind of, you know, info dump about um, occult occultism, mm-hmm. I thought was interesting, especially for 1968. You figure audiences probably... War, like this was a big like uh educational thing for them mm-hmm. about like uh, you know like who who you know who knows anything about like this uh this subject that they're talking about and so this was the movie that kind of explained it to you so yeah i thought it was uh an entertaining time you should check it out it's a good horror movie and the devil shows up and he does indeed ride out he does mm-hmm. yeah. so that makes three of us yes have said yeah. uh that you should watch it so you should go check it out mm-hmm. you're required to watch it by approved. law. Yeah, yes. You have to watch it. Next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... Sean, do we have a proxy for Mr. Tyler? We do. 
What is his choice for our pick next week? You know, I find it interesting that um, oh, no. <laughs> he that we watched a movie that we thought was kind of Cronenbergian. Uh-huh. Oh. So now we're going to watch straight Cronenbergian. Oh. We're watching a movie called Scanners. Oh, okay. All right. Next okay. week. Okay. On the Saturday Night Freak Show. So Scanners next week. We hope you'll join us. And until then, boys and g- boils and ghouls, mm-hmm. the basement is going dark. <laughs>